Hi, welcome to today's card lesson. In this exercise, we would model this ladder. We would be working with the frame generator. I hope you find this useful. Please consider subscribing to this channel if you are yet to do that. Also, do well to like this video. Let's push it out to a lot more people. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns at the end, you can leave them down in the comment section below. I would address them as soon as I can. Let's begin with today's exercise. We have our inventor open. Let's get our worksheet to begin to create this model. To get our worksheet, we'll go up here and click on new. There are a number of sheet templates here for today. We would be working with a millimeter template. It's going to be more of a pad file for the skeleton part of the rack or the ladder. So let's just select under part, create 2D and 3D object, a standard millimeter IPT template and the metric, and we would create. I have this presentation sheet, but I would want to change that. And so just go to tools. If you just have the default interface, that is fine. You don't need to change anything. But for me, I prefer that default interface. So I'll go into tools, application options. And then under the color tab up here, I would select light. One color under the background should also be selected and we would apply. Now we can close this. This is the interface I am talking about. So let's go back to the 3D model tab so we can begin our model. We will begin by creating the skeletal outline where we would put the frame members to form the ladder or the rack. To do that, let's pick the 2D sketch command up here, and then we want to work on the YT plane, so we'll click on that. Now we would pick the line command, let's draw a line starting from the origin. And so just click and then drag upwards and enter the length of 1250 for the height of that line and you can press enter just press escape to get off the dimension command and double click the scroll mouse button so you can get your work in focus now this dimension we want to move it a little bit away because it's lying on the line so just touch on that dimension you will get that icon and now you can click and drag however for this line it is supposed to be a constructional line so just click on that line and come up here under the format group. You will see the first option that says construction. Just click on that. Now let's continue to draw our profile. We pick the line command again and we will draw our line starting from here. Make sure you snap onto the horizontal line passing through the origin. So from here, we would move to the left. This much is fine. We would slant it a little until we locate that reference line up there that is going to this point. So here it's fine, just click. And then we would go until we locate that vertical line also that connects to where we started drawing the line from. So from this point, we would connect to this one. You can right click and okay, so we would dimension. Let's zoom in a little. You zoom in by scrolling up the scroll mouse button. Now we would dimension and so the dimension command, the distance between this constructional line and this vertical line right here is 175. Just enter that and then between this point here and the constructional line as well is 350. Enter that also. Now the profile has changed a little bit, but no problem. Just locate this point, click, and now you can drag it so you get the right profile we started with. We will continue to dimension. The distance between this point and the constructional line is 135. Okay. Now let's get off the dimension command. Just locate any point and drag it so you know where else to apply dimension in order to fully constrain the sketch. It even says down here that we need two dimensions. So we'll do that. Now what I want to do is to place this line right on this point. We would use the coincident constraint for that. We will select this line and then the origin. Great. We would also do same for this point here and this very line that fully constrains our sketch. 
Now let's pick the line command again. Let's divide this from this lantern line to this vertical line. We'll do another one up. And then finally, okay. Now we would dimension these lines as well. So the distance between the first line and this baseline is 325. Same as between this line and that line. So just click and then you click on the dimension you want to replicate. So we'll click on this one and check. We'll do same. Click. Just choose the dimension you want to replicate and then you check. Awesome. Now we would apply a fillet. And so the fillet command, the fillet radius is going to be 100. So just enter that right here. We would select this line and this line as well as this and that. And we would close this. Okay, so just to make sure our work is readable, let's move this dimension. So just touch on it until you see that icon. And then you click and drag it so you get your dimensions all neatly stacked. Awesome. Now this 2D drawing is ready. It's going to serve as the basis for the 3D drawing. So we would finish this. Double click the scroll mouse button so it gets the work in focus. Now we need another plane. That is going to be the plane on which we draw the other side of these outlines. And so just drop down the plane options and choose the one that says offset from plane. Now let's look for a plane to offset this plane from. Let's look at one of the default planes. Let's see, it is going to be the YZ plane. So just click on that. And now see, you can click on this arrow and drag it. We can also specify how far we want that to be using this box. So just clean whatever you have here and specify 800 is fine. Let's check that. Now we'll select this plane and create a sketch on it. But we don't need to go through the pain of creating the sketch again. We can just use the option that says project geometry and select everything. So we get these lines projected onto that plane. Now that is it. We can finish this sketch. Awesome. Let's hide this plane. We no longer need it. So we just click on it, right click and turn off visibility. Okay, now we want to switch into 3D mode. So we will drop down this option here and choose the one that says 3D. We get a 3D interface. We will choose the line command and connect some points. First of all, connect this point here. Make sure it turns green. It means you are right on that point to this very point here. We can right click and choose the option that says restart to start another line from a different point. So from this point here also to this point, you right click and then we would restart. We would connect this point also to this very one. Just watch and do same from this point also to this very one. Right click, restart this very point to this one. Right click restart this point right here to this point right click and then restart the last one is this point to this very one you can right click and then ok this time so this is the skeletal outline i am talking about it is fully done we will go ahead and save this and based on this outline we would put the frames on the lines so let's save this okay it says we cannot save this window in this environment let's just close this and finish the sketch now we can save i'll save this on my desktop as skeleton now that this is saved Let's open a new sheet template. This time it's going to be an assembly template. And so we would pick the fourth option that says standard MMIAM because we want to assemble. That is by adding the frame members to the skeletal outline we just did. Select that and now we would create. 
before we even do anything, let's save this. I would leave the default name assembly one and see. now let's place that skeletal outline we did. So click on the place option up here and you get this. Now select the skeleton and then we would open. You can right click and place grounded at origin. Let's press escape since we need just one of the outline. Now let's go into the design tab up here and choose the one that says insert frame. Okay, here we are to specify some details. It says placement. We want to use the line we select to be the placement of the frame member. For the frame member, the category, we would select the square or rectangular tube for the standard we will choose the ISO standard for the family. We will pick the first one that says rectangular structure steel code form rolled structural hollow section. And then for the size, we would choose the 60 by 40 by three, this very one. For the material, steel mild is fine. Appearance as material is okay. And then we would select the lines we want to put the frame members on. So we would group them, first of all, we will select these ones here, and then we would select these ones over there and then the ones in the middle. So let's do that. We'll select this line. Straight away, it puts the frame member on that line. There it is here. Okay. We would also select this line and then this very one. Also, this one just select all the lines, but let's see we have a gap here. In order to correct that, choose the option here that says merge three members, so it treats them as one body. We'll select that and now see it closes that up. We will click on the plus sign, and it's asking us to create files for those three members, which is fine. And so we would OK, and then OK again. Okay, now let's select this side also. All right, we will click on the plus sign and OK. We would also want to select these lines. But for them, we would turn off the merge frame members because we want to apply end conditions to them. You would understand what that means later. Just click on the plus sign. Okay. Right. Now we would also do the same for these lines. Click on the plus sign. Okay. Then to so this also, we click on the plus sign, okay. And then finally, this one, and okay. You can okay. Awesome. Now let's turn off the visibility of the skeleton. So just click on it, right click, and turn off the visibility. Great, I like to always change the view in assembly template to shaded with edges. Awesome. Now let's go back to the design tab and apply those end conditions I was talking about. So choose the option that says trim and extend. And what we want to do is to trim the ends. Now let's see what is happening here. We have this frame moving into this particular frame which is not what we want. We want it to end on this face. And so let's select the face, which is supposed to be this very one, and the frame members we want to trim. We can trim this, that, that one, this and that, also this and that one, all up onto that frame. So let's select them. This, this one, that, this, that one, also this 
end that. We want to trim them up to this face, which is fine. And so we click on the plus sign. Now let's see what happens. It has trimmed them up onto this particular face. Okay, we'll do same for the opposite side. Let's select the face, which is going to be this face. We want to trim this, remember that one. Also this, that, this very one, this, and also that one up onto this face. Let's click on the plus sign. Awesome. Now to this face also, we want to trim this frame member, this one, also that. And then those frame members on the opposite side, all up onto that face, we would click on the plus sign. Okay, let's see. That has been done. Let's turn this around. We will select this face. No, I think we've selected the wrong face. Let's close this and select the face again. This very one. And then we want to trim these members. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so that is it. Very easy and simple. Let's apply some final detail. Let's change the appearance. First of all, let's select the frame and then we can change the appearance. You can choose any color of your choice. I will choose the chrome polished black. I'd also like to change the view to realistic and then add some shadows, add the reflection, and then even add a ground plane. I changed my mind. Let me change the view to shaded with edges. Okay, so that is it for this tutorial. Very easy and simple. This is a quick one on frame generators. I hope you get a good appreciation on how frame generator is used. Please consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't yet done that. Also do well to like this video. It helps the YouTube algorithm push it to a lot more people. If you have any comments, questions or concerns, you can leave them down in the comment section below. I will address them as soon as I can. Don't forget to save this work and share this with your card friends. I'll see you soon with the next tutorial. Bye.